And good morning, boys and girls. It's Saturday, the 11th of October, 2014. Welcome to this morning's United Kingdom Talk. I had some music coming through there, didn't I? And I don't know where it was coming from. Hang on. No, it's still there. Now, where on earth is that coming from? Um... I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. I'm just, could it come? No, not that. Not that. Well, that's the weirdest thing ever. I've got... <laughs> I've got music coming through, and I don't know what's playing that out. How strange is that? I've got, if you're watching the recording of the show, you won't be getting this music. Um, don't know. Well, we'll carry on. Oh. Where the hell is that coming from? <laughs> the trouble is it's on the same circuit on my um, mixing device here as uh, the, the button that would take calls and things. So I can't do that, can I, at the moment? Or we'll, we'll, have, we'll, just have to, well, I'll just have to go with it and see what happens. Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, I've been up. Good morning, Daniel. How are you this morning, Daniel? And Marge is with us as well this morning. Possibly Suzanne. Good morning, Suzanne. Are you there today, Suzanne? Because I don't think we've received an email. I have a feeling you're there this morning. Morning. Well, uh, there's a new bulb in the studio. How exciting is that? We are fully illuminated. Have you seen my um, studio bulbs? Where are they? Here's one here. Right, these are the bulbs that I have to get for my, for my special studio lights, boys and girls. One moment. Here we are. Studio lights. Look at the size of those, dear. 125 watts each. I don't mind spending a little bit of money on electricity just so that you can have the enjoyment of watching this programme. Yeah. So that's the new bulb. I've already been out this morning. I've had my flu injection. Oh, it all happens very quickly, dear. It does. So I got up around about nine o'clock, especially to have this, because I meant to go and have one last week, and I completely forgot about it, because I've got asthma and a little bit of a problem with my blood as well. I'm allowed a free flu injection. I highly recommend them, boys and girls. Uh, you have these injections, and then throughout the winter, people are passing out all over the place. People are dying left, right, and centre, and I'm still standing, as Elton John says. I'm still standing. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. Uh, Daniel, you've spotted it. I'll come to you in a minute. You, I've wondered how long it would take you. <laughs> so I popped down the doctor, uh, had my breakfast, went down to the doctor's around about a quarter to ten. Ten o'clock, I went in there, and you have to hand in this little form. I don't know if I've got one here now. I think I had two. No, I haven't got it here now. Oh, what's this? No. You have to hand in this form and it's got various ailments and you've just got to tick which one you got. And you go to this lady on the desk and she says, hello. She says, she has a quick look at the form. OK, I'd just like to queue around the corner there. So I went around the corner. No queue. Doctor waves at you. You go in. Sit down. Hello, how are you? Opens a thing. Bang in your arm and out. You're not in there for more than two minutes. And the only reason you're in there for two minutes is because you had to walk round. You, uh, with the, I must have been with the doctor. Twelve seconds. That's it. It's all done. How marvellous. And then on the way back, um, I was just reading the leaflet, you know, about the various different uh, side effects that you can get. Now, I always tell you, you know, my advice, when you get pills and potions, maybe you're going for an operation, something like that, do not read the leaflets they give you, okay? Never, ever read the leaflets they give you, because let me tell you, by the time you finish reading that leaflet, you will have every complication under the sun. So I'm reading this leaflet as I'm going along, right, okay, you know, put it in my pocket, and then I thought, oh, do you know what, I feel a bit light, I, I, I feel a bit light-headed, I did. So I'm carrying on, and I think, you know, things don't look as clear, the vision's a bit blurry now, and I'm looking around, you know, at the sky, because it's been a beautiful morning here so far, here in, the, here in Bracknell, Royal Berkshire, really nice morning, the sun was out, it was warm, I, was, I went out in a t-shirt, I don't actually, you know, like I'm dressed now, like with a reasonable shirt on, which I'm afraid to say has got, I'm going to have to show you, it's got a bit tight again, oh, look, a bit, bit of weight's gone back on. 
and I'm, 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 that's because of bread and bloody cheese and onion crisps again. Oh, God, I can't keep off them. But, you know, I'm just about to go on holiday. So um, we'll we're, we're see if we're going on Tuesday or not, because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go now. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm coming back from there, and I thought, well, I feel a bit shaky on my feet. And I think, no, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. And this was because I read the bloody leaflet. Do not read the leaflet. Side effects, that's it. Don't ring the le read the leaflet, because you'll get all those side effects by the time you've walked from the doctor back to your own, because it's in your head. It's in my head, it's in my head, isn't it? That's what it is. Don't read those bits and pieces. So I walked back home, had a cup of tea, done a little bit of work around the house, and here I am now, chatting to you on this wonderful Sunday morning. Thank you. Um, so that was it. It's, as I say, it's very, very quick. Highly recommended. And even if you're not entitled to have a flu injection, you can buy one. I think... In Asda, when they start doing them, there'll be about about seven or eight pounds worth every penny, especially if you're self-employed. Okay, because you don't get any money if you're self-employed and you're not working, do you? Have the flu injection; it stops it all happening. There are other people out there who would say, "Oh no, don't have it; it's got mercury in it." There's all those people out there every year, year in year out, who say they have the injection and they're ill straight away afterwards, so they're not having it anymore. That's a load of old baloney. I don't believe that for one moment. You just happen to have got a cold directly after having the flu. Let me tell you, if, you, if you've had the flu, you know it's the flu. It's not a cold. All these pathetic people. Oh, 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 oh they sneezed once. A little bit of a runny nose. Oh, my God, I've got flu. I need a week off. No, you don't. You've got a cold. That is not flu. Flu is when you're in bed, you've got to change the sheets three or four times a night because you've sweated so much. You're laying there in your own sweat. Uh, you can't get up. All your joints ache. It's difficult to move around. It is the worst thing ever. I've had it twice. You don't want the flu. You really don't want the flu. Don't come in. A, oh, and, and the blokes are the worst. Oh, God's sake. Aren't they the worst ones? In fact... Um, Ronnie's boyfriend Andy this week has as a cold. He's sitting there in the arm t in, in on the settee at Ronnie's house, looking all you know, looking all forlorn. And <laughs> he's got a little tish tissue in his hand, <laughs> like that all the time. I said, "You're right. Oh, I got a, I've got gay man flu, which is even worse than man flu, apparently." Oh dear, dear me! No, you've just got to get on with it. If you really are that ill that you've got to stay in bed, then my heart goes out to you. If you've got a cold, sitting in a chair, get out there. Just ignore it. You must work through because we are real men, boys and girls. We are real men, and we must carry on. There we are. So I just had it in this arm. It's not even tender. Look, not even tender. That flu injection. Good morning to Daniel, who wants to know what our item of interest is in the corner today. I'm so glad you watch the show, Daniel, because no one ever else ever notices the item of interest I've often got on the left. What is it? Is that your right? What's that? That's, that's my left. If I look, it's your left, is it? Is that left? Yeah, on the left-hand side of the screen, at the bottom, those of you without vision uh, will have to know, it's like black at the top, and it's long and brown. It is an inflatable microphone. Hello, Chris Ridden here, entertaining the world and beyond, throughout outer space and interstellar galaxies via Voyagers 1 and 2. Yes, boys and girls, all probes leaving this country now will be carrying this program. Did you know that? Did you know that? Recordings of me are going to be sent into outer space very shortly. Testing one, two. Can you hear me? Isn't that great? Very good for hitting people. Now, this was a gift. This was a gift from Emily. Emily is someone who comes to my um, quiz night on Tuesdays, but I won't be there this week because I'm away. Uh, she, and she bought me in that, and she bought me in a she bought me in a brown one, and also she bought me in two actually. She bought in a pink one as well, which I haven't blown up yet. And I thought you might like to see me blowing. So here we go, but pardon. Here we go, boys and girls. We're going to blow this one up. <sighs> Blimey, that's hard work. Why won't that blow up? Is it because it's, like, flattened? This is a pink microphone, a pink plastic microphone. 
One minute. We will blow this one up and also display it on the back behind me. Look at that. I'm good at blowing, in, I, Daniel? Eh? Now it's, now it's, now it's deflating slightly. I'm gonna... You got to put a t oh bloody hell! How do you put the top in quickly? I can't do this. Pincer, right? I oh, done it, done it, done it, done it, done it, done it, done it. There we are. One minute. Oh, it's coming out again. Hang on, one more go. Oh, I can't believe, I can't get the, what happens? You take your lips off it and, and it deflates straight away. How annoying is that? Do you know what I mean, ladies? Oh, I hate that one. It's gone, look, it's, it's gone all limp again. Why is that? One minute. Let's try once more. No! Well, that's not too bad, is it? That's that's it. It's not quite, it's not quite solid and erect, but I think that's going to have to do, ladies. Here we are. So two micro testing. Look, I'm in I'm in stereo now. Testing. I've got a pink microphone and an orange microphone. How marvelous! Let me just display those there like that. Maybe I can put. Why can't I put that? I'm going to put put one there. No, it won't stay up. One minute. There we are. My two lovely microphones. Thank you very much, Emily, for my blow-up microphones. <sighs> Daniel says, you are good at blowing. I ble bet you could suck a golf ball through a hose pipe. Well, only if the, only if the hose pipe was big enough, dear. It'd be difficult to do that, wouldn't it? Good morning to Rory, who says, shall I call in or Skype? Happy holidays. I only had real flu once. Well, hang on, Rory, let me just... Well, that music seems to have gone wherever it was coming from. So I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Rory, would you like to Skype in? You can either Skype or call in, doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Sky is the Skype username up there today? Today it's not up there, is it? One minute, we can uh, deal with that immediately. One moment, please. Trying to connect. OK, if you want to Skype in, Rory... Uh, the Skype in is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. OK, that's our Skype in number if you're watching the show live. And you're watching the show live if it's just 12.15 on Saturday, October the 11th, 2014. If that's the time where you are now, you are indeed with us live and you can talk to us live by Skyping in, all one word, Chris Reardon, C H R. I S R E A R D O N. That's a Skype in. There's also a local London number, 020 8133 6358. Okay? 020 8133 6358. So I'm awaiting your call. Oh, he's there already. Check this out. Good morning, Rory. Hi, Chris. Hello. All right. Oh, you need to um, just pause me on your. Um, on your player, OK, Rory? Yeah, will do. Right, I'll just turn you up here a little bit as well. Otherwise, we can hear ten of me all at the same time. How exciting is that? How are you doing, mate? You OK? I'm very well, yeah. Just let you know, I don't take the video. I can't show video, unfortunately, all right? But no, we can hear your wonderful voice. <laughs> no, I, 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 I thought you couldn't take video, so I just uh, cut mine off too. Yeah. Thank you for reading the uh, Pam Ayres poem. Oh, Poetry, Rory, please don't send any more poems in. <laughs> I'll, I'll send in well, I'll, I'll send in fun conversation and chatter instead. Fun maybe. conversation and chatter. Marge, who's a regular viewer to the show, uh, she lives in Oklahoma. I expect she's yeah. with us this morning as well. Um, she's she loves she loves poems. She loves your poems. Uh, she actually, you. yeah, she loves your poems. Do you write any yourself? 
I I do actually, Chris. I've got um, I I've started a, a new voluntary post at a um, at a, 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 a theatre de la Catessens, so I'm hoping to do that again soon. But I'm doing sort of admin at the moment. At the, moment. Uh, the delicatessent. The theatre de la Catessens. Oh, in- sorry, the theatre theatre delicat. Which theatre was it? Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself, Rory? Because you're you're new to the show, and and we've got new people. So tell us all about yourself a, a little bit. You know, within the space yeah. of like three seconds, please. Uh, well, <laughs> one, two, three. I've, no, I've um, I I I I go to Chris's karaoke, folks, and I'm always uh, listening into the shows and hopefully contributing reasonable things that don't don't, don't include just poetry. And I um <laughs> and I do voluntary um, work as well, and I'm uh, I am a sort of poet uh, come uh, s- singer as well, and uh, I'm I, I'm London based. I live on my own, but I have a cat called Tara. Chris's Ta- cat's called Katie. Tara the cat. What sort of cat yes. you got, Rory? She's a muggy, actually, Chris. She's got. Uh, she's ten years old. I, I adopted her when she was four, and she's always up on. Uh, at this very moment, she's on the desk. She's, she's on the desk, so she's very much. Um, she always always listens in with me, actually, as well. And oh. Got, and I have Brenda from the Philippines with me, who took over from Lee. If you remember Lee from the karaoke. Yes. And. Um, she she she's listening intently to the idea. What, what's your plan for your holiday? Your holiday, Chris. Do you know? I I still haven't decided yet, Rory. I'm a bit worried. I know you might think it's a bit silly. I'm a bit worried about all this Ebola stuff going around. Um, I saw another story yesterday of this woman. Uh, she was on a plane going to Vegas, so it stopped in Vegas, and they decided that someone on the plane might have Ebola, so they stopped everyone getting off it for hours. You know, I mean, just... And there's one in Australia. There's some bloke supposed to have died in Macedonia, but we don't know what the cause of that was. They think it might have been that, might have been something else. And I just see it spreading, and I don't want to get caught up in all of this, dear. Worst of all, get it myself. Well, I, I I heard it was on the news this, this morning. I, I think it's all best avoided. Yeah. It sounds worse than flu, if you ask me, to be honest. Oh, no, you can. there's a good chance you're going to die from this one, mate, if you get it. Especially if you've got an underlying health cause, you know, then then, then it's even worse for you. But it, I, I, it, it I, does I know, worry me. It's worse than flu. Yeah, so I haven't decided really what to do yet. I get to choose. My sister... She reckons what I should do is pack a case and decide on Tuesday morning whether to go or not. If you don't want to go, just don't turn up at the airport. Simple as that. And I think probably that's the way to go, Rory. So I'll decide then. Also, the other thing, quite apart from the Ebola, I get like this every time I'm about to go away somewhere. You know, I think, oh, do I really want to go? Oh, do I really want to sit on the plane and get to the airport? How am I going to get to the airport, to the hotel, with all this old rubbish? I'm I'm terrible traveller. Terrible. Except when I took my nephew, where everything, you know, was worked out in my head. I knew what I needed to do and how to look after him. And it's the weirdest thing ever. You know, that particular, I didn't want to come back. I didn't want to come back home off that one. We had such a wonderful time and everything, and I had someone to look after. And it was a completely different experience. Now, it's only me again. I'm thinking, oh, do I really want to go and all that? You know, I'd ra- quite frankly, I'd, ra- I'd rather borrow another child and go back to Disney, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've been to America before. I was, in, um, I, I was in America in 2002 with my parents in Florida. Oh, and did- I made the mistake of staying, staying awake on the plane. This is when I was at art college. Yeah. And everybody wanted me to come back and do our. We were, we were rehearsing for our Christmas show at the time, and for some, for a bizarre combination of reasons, I ended up spending spending twenty nine hours awake, and then Ooh. thirteen hours asleep afterwards. Oh, crazy it was! Gosh, <laughs> so your parents are in Florida, are they? No, uh, we were we were visiting Mum's friend in uh, in oh. Florida at the time in Palm Beach. Oh. My, par- my parents have retired to Devon, and uh, we, do, we we do have countryside history in our family. So, maybe, so I'm vis- visiting Devon in November. How interesting! Who mm, are you know? Who are yeah? Did, what do they do down there with their spare time? Where, did uh, they did they live up here before, Rory? Yes, we. My dad did a um, did an internet uh, firm in London, and my my mum worked for there as well. Right. And, and funnily enough, one of the temps didn't realise they were married. All oh, right. Yes. And asked 
and asked a friend of ours if, if, if there was anything going on between my parents. <laughs> <laughs> to, which, to which our friend Barbara, uh, uh, known as BMW because of her initials, <laughs> BMW said, yes, they've been married for 33 years. They've got two kids apart from that, nothing. And one of them sitting over there. <laughs> that was did, me, actually. Did you, go, was, did you go to Disney at all when he was in Florida? I did when I was eight, and um, I went oh. on the, the rides that presumably are still there, and I flirted with Minnie Mouse as well. I got the photographs to prove it. Um, <laughs> um, and, but actually, when, when, I, when I was eight, I even found Epcot a bit, bit more interesting. And right, for the, yes. For the technology of the time, it's yeah. absolutely fantastic, honestly. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I love them all. I love them all, and, you know, if I could go every year, I would go every year, but I won't, you know. So would I. It's a, question of, it's a question of money. Do you know, I was going over the old shows last night, Chris, the, the United, United, United Kingdom talk shows, and I found one, I, I thought, which is the earliest? And by chance, um, I found one, one, of, one of yours from Christmas Day 2008. Oh, right, yeah. Well, tell me about that one. I think you were talking to Joyce at the time. On, on on that day and Joyce. you'd taken some some uh some footage of the shopping mall ne ne next to the church and all of the oh young... yes 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 i remember that yeah and there was um do you remember the old lady going up the escalator in there yes yes absolutely <laughs> yes. after funnily enough after i'd finished i mean way after i finished i'm going back outside with the camera and the security blow excuse me sir um, were you filming in here? I said, yes. He said, can I ask what you feel? I said, the decorations. OK, so, well, thank you very much. He says, um, not to worry, but please ask permission in future. And I thought, well, I've done it now, you know. Why yeah, didn't absolutely. you ask? Why didn't you come over at the time? You could have been in it, dear. Well put, <laughs> well put, Chris. Yes, quite. Yeah. So, well, well, where's, where's your quiz night, by the way? That's Tuesdays, obviously yeah. not next week, although it carries on. You know, someone else is doing it for me next week. A very, very good friend of mine, Ben, who you've heard me speak about many times. Yeah. And uh, he's more than capable of doing that. And, um, uh, we, yeah, we've become quite close friends for some reason over the last few months, much closer than we were, which is quite nice. Um, he's uh, slightly older than me, married. He loves his gardening. He's fantastic yeah. with technology absolutely right. fantastic if, if you've got a problem with any sort of technology whatsoever ask ben and he's he knows the answer and is if he, he doesn't sort of real life macgyver in a way oh it's it? fantastic and if he doesn't know the answer he will find it for you he's one of those people who's got the knack of being able to go on the internet and, and know what to type in to get the answer that he wants. Whereas I, I'll type stuff in, you know, search things, and I won't find yeah. anything. Or I'll find so much stuff that I don't know how to weave my way through it all. And it, funnily enough, over at um, Ronnie's house the other day, yeah. I was saying, um, he's, he's saying to me, he said, do you know what you're going to do there yet? I said, well, not really. He said, well, haven't you worked it all out? I said, well, no. He said, yeah. like, why not then? I said, I don't know how to. You know, uh, my idea, you know, I'll get to the hotel and then usually in the uh, foyer, they have all these leaflets, don't they? You know, of yeah. tips and things like that. And that's what I was going to do. I thought I'll get there, um, pick up all these leaflets. Do you know, the more I think about it, the more I'll probably go now, to be honest. I'm right. starting to get a little bit more that way. But I, I, I have an idea in my head. Um, I'd like to see uh, the Dead Sea. Um, Bethlehem people have told me is probably as as a tourist if i go in a group which i will do so you know because you pick up these leaflets and it like you know guided tour and a little mini bus comes and takes i don't know 10 or 12 of you to wherever yeah right um bethlehem is probably the would be safe for a tourist like myself or someone like that but it is the least safe place that you could go to apparently so oh, so no. so they say um so maybe not that one but certainly the wailing wall uh the dead what do people wail at at the wailing wall do you know why are they wailing i'm not sure i don't know actually maybe do they've Maybe they maybe they've been to Wales beforehand. Maybe maybe that's why. <laughs> Sorry, that, Wailing. That, that, was a, that was a bad joke, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Wailing wall. I d I don't know why why what people wail at. Is it like that? They're they're wailing because some 
person has died or I'm not quite something to do with that yeah but obviously you know so I'd like to go there um and and, and, well that's the thing you know you go there to find these things out you know yeah so once I've been I will understand um uh the Dead Sea um Jerusalem and really the holy things you know, you know, I don't know if you know, right? I do go to church Sunday. I'm not a fantastic Catholic or anything like that, you know, but I do go Sunday and I was brought up in that. So I want to go now and see what it was all about. I mean, maybe to see where the cross went up and all that business. I remember on a, on a previous show, you were saying that father likes my singing. You were saying do what? You, 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 you were saying how much um, you, you said father likes my singing. You said, do you remember? Uh, oh, he does. He came up to me. Oh, that's a few, was quite a few couple of months ago now. Well, I was uh, 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 having a cup of tea in the hall afterwards. I don't usually have a cup of tea after church in the hall uh, because I've got Sunday night karaoke to do. Yeah. Um, and I have to leave. So what happens Sunday is that I'll get up at nine. I leave the house at ten, cycle yes. to church, do that, come back. I get here around about ten to twelve. I'll have my dinner, cook yeah. dinner, have that do a couple of bits, and then I go back to bed at about half past one, two o'clock. Right. I then get up again at um, quarter past four. Mm-hmm. I leave the house at... Is it quarter... F- oh, hang on a minute. What time do I get up? Yeah, quarter past four. <coughs> I leave the house at about a quarter to five. Yeah. And I get to the place sometime between quarter past six and half past six. I set up, and the karaoke starts at seven o'clock down in Dulwich. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the cherry tree. That's going all right. Sometimes it uh, was a couple of weeks, two weeks we had very busy, and then last week it was a bit quieter, so you never quite know what it's going to be. But it's a nice, nice place. And actually, Rory, I hope when you come down there, yep. Um, yep. you will notice how much better the sound system is there because that's my own sound system. I, I, I bring everything with me. A little bit like we did in Hammersmith. That was my sound, yep. s- sound system there as well. Yep. The I'm one really in um, the one in Barra wasn't a very good sound system, that, and that was their own one. The speakers were knackered in there, and they have been for years. I'm really looking forward to doing the karaoke there. I I, I remember doing the uh, Freddie Mercury and Queen and the Beatles and all that sort of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And it's all on one level, so your your wheelchair will be quite easy to get in and out on that one. Okay, oh, brilliant, excellent. I was uh, I, I, I just to tell you before I go a quick n- n- nativity story that I think you'll find quite amusing. When I, when I was at art college, I was um, uh, uh, one of our teachers was from the National Youth Music Theatre, and he did a he did a nativity play in uh, uh, and there was one public performance, and the person that played Joseph wanted to play the innkeeper, and the innkeeper person wanted to play Joseph, <laughs> and and I as a child have played this role myself, so I know what it's like. So Joseph and Mary came to the inn door and said, "Is there any?" Um, the space for my wife and remember there's one public performance yeah and the, and the innkeeper said yes do come in plenty of room <laughs> <laughs> wrong the, one who's reading the wrong lines well well, 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 well no ba- ba- basically each boy um, they were, they, it was a primary school performance and each boy was jealous of the other, uh, other's part so the play was really ruined <laughs> and Jeremy told me they had to go through the uh, do the entire show a second time. <laughs> in order to get it right. I, I listened to you um, then. You were talking about your Christmas shows. Yes. What, what do you do then, Rory? What, what's all that about, please? Um, well, that was I was at uh, that was when I was at the Orpheus Centre in Surrey. We, we we used to do sort of uh, Christmas shows, compilations of Christmas items each year uh, to raise money. Well, that was a few years ago now. But now, but now I do the. And the Friday show and the and the Christmas shows at uh, Radio Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. Oh yes, you, oh you do the hospital radio, do you? There? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's, it's, it's good fun over there. I've I've been um, rehearsing for your quiz nights by watching The Chase, by the way, with Brad, Bradley Walsh. <laughs> 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 now with the with the Mayflower, the door there, it's yeah. quite narrow in that pub. Um... Would you like me to measure the door next time I go? Yeah, that sounds like a good I'll try and measure the doorway, otherwise you will... I don't want you to get stuck. It is a very, very narrow Uh, pub in there. I'm just trying to think. You could go... You'd have to go in 
turn right, turn left, and go. Turn right and go in that in in the um in the snug bar, which actually where 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 that that fills up there. But we could uh, reserve you a little table there, um, right, and I'd maybe if you, if you might bring someone with you as well. I don't know. It's not yeah. a bad prize, you know. It's a fifty pound bar tab you win. Oh wow! Gosh. Yeah, not but you can't use it that night. So at the end, you know, they take your email address and they send you a voucher for next time. But then you've got <laughs> fifty pounds. You can have a blooming. You can bring someone with you, have a slap up meal, and have some drinks. Then the next week for nothing. I mean, it's fifty pound bar time. It's not bad, is it? That uh, it, it 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 sounds wonderful. Actually, mm. I, I I find quizzes amazing because you you realise you know things that you wouldn't otherwise know. I think yes, it's yes. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking, I'm hoping to find another couple of quizzes, Monday and Wednesday, um, right. as I've not got a karaoke. It should be easier to find a quiz night. In fact, a pub quite near me here in, here in Bracknell, I've yeah. noticed has just had a big refurbishment. Um, so I think it's probably worth me actually just walking in there and saying, hello, I do this, would you be interested? And, and seeing that they, they opened again this morning at 11 o'clock. Yeah. I tell you what, I saw. I went, walked past there yesterday, and saw the workmen doing it. They did enough work quick on that last day. My God, really oh. fast. You know how it came on. One minute I went past, there was nothing in there, and I came back about two hours later, and the carpet was down. All the tables and chairs were out. They moved ever so fast. Oh, <laughs> that sounds very posh. Yeah. <laughs> All right then, Rory. Nice to talk to you. Yeah. One, one quick one liner. I heard it the other day. Yeah. How many ants does it take to fill up an apartment? Don't know. Ten ants. Ten ants. Yes, I've got a few of those in my properties. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris. Enjoy the show, folks. Thank you, Rory. Cheerio. Yeah, bye. There we are. That's Rory in Fulham. Very expensive part of the world, Fulham. Very, very expensive to live there, my darlings. Even I couldn't afford to live there. God. He must be loaded, that Rory. Yep, so the quiz night I do is at uh, the Mayflower pub which is right on the Thames in Rotherhithe every Tuesday nights between Tuesday nights between 8.30 and 10.30. Get there at 8 or ring ahead if you want to book a table for that one because it does get very busy uh, for the next two weeks, actually. Although I'm only away for a week, um, I, I leave on Tuesday and come back Tuesday night. So for the next two weeks, my very good friend uh, Ben Parker will be hosting uh, the quiz there. All right. Uh, Daniel says, if Ebola don't kill you, the kidnappers will behead you. Stay at home. Oh, no, not in Israel. That's that's the other end, that is. It's not in Israel, Daniel. Do pay attention to what's going on, dear. There's an email address you want to join in. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is the email address. Now, one thing I noticed sometimes is that people put a little comment on the Google Hangout Hangouts stroke YouTube thing. And I never see these until I finish a show. So I'm kind of looking now to see if I can find them anywhere. Um, and then I could read them out really as I'm going along, but I, I don't see where they, where they end up, to be honest. Can anyone see, see anything like that? What's that there? No, I don't know what it is. Um, maybe it's... Is it on channel, maybe? One minute. Uh, if I click that, maybe I can see them on there. No. No, I don't know. Oh, you... If I, what if I do that? I don't No, I don't know how that works. Oh, no comments yet. That must be it there. Yeah, so please, just just rem remember that, gang. I don't. I really don't see it until after the show, OK? Uh, good morning to Marge, who says, A friend of mine got a flu shot, and they get symptoms of the flu shot. I never get a flu shot. I just take more ec in echinacea and my vitamins. I do get sick. It's mild. Um... And Marge says, I'll say you're going to die one day, no matter what you do. So best to be enjoying your life, no matter what worried. All the time, can never have fun. Yeah, oh, yeah you're, you're right there. Yeah, I probably will go, you know, getting quite excited now about seeing these biblical things. So that's that. Uh, what else? I have been to the doctor as well this week again. I, I had a, 
ear very very itchy ear really itchy i'm still itchy now so i got some ear drops from the do- i had a a um a, a, a telephone consultation so you don't actually have to go to the doctor he rings you and he decides what you want and if you know if you need to go in he will tell you you have to go in but i didn't need to go in so he just sent me down to the pharmacist i uh, went back to pick up a uh, prescription a little bottle of eardrops and i have to have have my head down like that right <laughs> laying on a on a pillow or something like that and I go drop 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 and then you've got to stay like that for a few minutes maybe I don't know three or four minutes and then and then when you get up again it all like dribbles down your neck so you have a little tissue there so I've got eardrops as well for that uh, my feet <coughs> my right foot is now rarely a problem I mean, it really is. It's so much better now, the right foot. And remember, that's like after... That's after almost two years of having this problem. In the last couple of days, my left foot has started to get better. And I'm hoping that it's going to be like that. Now, on holiday, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of walking around these tourist places. So that might kick them off again. I don't know. The only answer to that is to just put it up and stay in and, you know, be a bit silly going away and doing it. Although it did occur to me that perhaps maybe I should use the holiday just to rest the leg. But I I, I don't know. I don't know. So I've got my fingers crossed that that's going to be okay. My throat has been much... I was talking to Wendy, a regular correspondent and viewer to this programme. Talked to Wendy the other day. She was asking about my throat. Um, Much better. You know that that hasn't that that hasn't come up at all in the last few months. Now you remember that went on for about six or seven months, where this this blooming gland kept coming up all the time. That hasn't done that for a while, so I'm hoping that that sorted itself out as well. These things that I get though, they seem to go on forever. You know, when you're a child, you get something, it's all gone. You know, a couple of days later, it's all finished, isn't it? And yet, you know, I've had a couple of things now that just seem to go on and on, so I don't know why that is. So that's me. Uh, Ronnie had another bit of a procedure done yesterday. Um, something wrong with his stomach. Now, he says they, 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 had, they had to put him up out yesterday and had a good look um, while he was uh, under the influence of anaesthetic. And they've had a good look inside his stomach. And... He's got a choice now of having either keyhole surgery, right, where they've got to do whatever they've got to do, or he has major surgery. Now, the, the major surgery has a much better chance of working rather than the keyhole surgery. But with the keyhole surgery, it's much less invasive, obviously, um, and he would get over it quicker. So he was asking me what I would do. I said, well, have the keyhole surgery, see if that works, and then if that doesn't work, then have the major surgery, and, and I think that's what he's going to do. His, his, his stomach wall has dropped or something from the line. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if he's with us today. He might ring in and tell us a little bit later on. Um, I'm not exactly 100% sure of, of exactly what's going on there. All right, but he's got to have something stapled together or whatever. And that, that would happen within a few weeks. All right, so that's that's Ronnie at the moment. Uh, okay, uh, what else we got to talk about today? Oh, I've saved my... Oh, let me do a couple of messages. Chris, you are a hypochondriac. I've never known anyone with all your ailments to be still alive. You're a medical mystery. <laughs> oh, dear Daniel, you do make me laugh, dear. You really do. A medical mystery. Uh, Marge says, itchy ear means someone is talking about you. I hope so. I do hope so. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now, I've managed to save some money this week. My um, phone contract is up for renewal. Now, I have a, a lovely... Apple 5S thing, okay? And uh, this does the job. This is actually how all the short videos that you watch are recorded. They are recorded on the iPhone 5S. 
and hopefully while I'm in Israel I'll, I'll make some little videos out there and you should see one I, I don't know daily or what, when, whenever I can do them I hope to do one a day anyway and have a little chat like that while I'm over there and show you the uh, sites we'll start off I think with the plane journey and the hotel um, anyway so I've had that now well I, I bought that I had to buy a new phone in was it June this year when I lost my old one so I bought that and I think my contract was about £46 a month right but my contract is up in November now when you take out a contract like that and you get a phone you are also paying for the phone a lot of people seem to be under the illusion they think oh yeah yeah, 46 pound a month oh it's only 46 and i get a free phone well no you don't you are paying for the phone once the contract is up and this is what i've done for the first time this time you immediately ring them okay or, or maybe a month before give them a ring a month before my my contract is up actually up in november but i rang them this week about this and they say okay yep you can upgrade down you say well i don't want to upgrade i'm happy with my phone i want to go sim only which means you're no longer paying for the phone so all you're paying for is the little sim all right and of course your airtime and all that business and my £46 has come down to £22 a month. So that's a huge saving. Not only that, not only that, because I found I, 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 the, the EE, who are the people I'm with, it's £21.99 a month for SIM only. But I got this through the door from Virgin, and it says SIM only, 18 pounds a month so i, I rung up ee you know because you know, at the end of the day it's always easier to stay with whoever you are with if they can match the deal so i rung them i told them about this she said okay she said what i can do i'll put you on the 22 pound a month um sim only contract but for the first 11 for the first six months i can do that half price at 11 pounds a month so that will work out to over the year 16 pounds a month so i'm very pleased with that. so 16 pounds a month i'm paying for sim only now instead of 46 pounds a month so that is well worth doing okay so remember that gang you don't always need a brand new phone do you i'm very happy with that that is only a few months old but it, and, and it is slightly better than the one i had before because i've got um i think 64 gig of memory on that one or, or whatever the highest one is and the reason i've got the 64 gig is because i do the videos and i found with the 16 gig i kept filling it up and then you'd have to unload it and start again i kept filling it up so that one i sh should be do the job really fine if you're happy with the phone then look around just before about a month before your contract's due up look around for sim only deals doesn't have to be with the same network either you know, you might be with EE and they may not be able to uh, match an offer you found with um, O2, for example. I know three, uh, the Network 3 have got some very good deals, although I had a very bad experience with them in the past. The, the customer service at the time, it might have changed and it might be really good now, I don't know. But the customer services about, about 14 years ago was absolutely diabolic. It was the worst worst incident of customer service i've ever had from any company it was really bad so i left them and i swore never to go back to them and i'm still still kind of at that now I, i'm a bit unforgiving when it comes to companies who who treat me like um like 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 i don't exist you know so i won't go back with three anymore however that being said when I go past the shop, they always seem to have a fairly good deal up there for uh, data and all that. So that is worth doing. Sim only. You happy with your phone? Go sim only. You're you're more than half what you're paying. All right. Daniel, will you stop writing these things to me? You're very, very rude sometimes, Daniel. Very rude indeed. Uh, right. I'm doing 10 things at once here. Don't forget the email address, gang. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris 
at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. March says, I like the email invite notification to your Saturday shows from Google+. Plus." March, I don't know anything about that. What is that that you get then? I, I don't know. Are you getting some sort of notification? <laughs> you know more than me. I don't know, it's sending stuff out all the time. Daniel says he's with Virgin Unlimited Data and calls any network £15 a month. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, so it really is worth... Are you SIM only as well, Daniel? Not Ronnie, though. Oh, no, no. He's just changed from EE to O2 uh, because it was cheaper for him to do so. And he's got the new iPhone 6A, is it? You know the, you know the one with a really big screen? He's got one of those now. Which, I like it, I like the big screen, right? And I like the look of it, the weight of it, beautiful. But it's, you know, when you're holding it, and I'm thinking, oh, would I get used to holding something that big? Sorry, Daniel. Well, do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, stop it. Would I, would I actually get used to holding something, like, as big as that in your... And, of course, you know, pockets. Where are you going to put the blooming thing in your pocket? That's it, isn't it? Okay, don't forget if you want to give us a call or something today, uh, Chris Reardon is my Skype username, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, Chris Reardon. Or you can phone in 020 8133 020 Blimey, it's 12 minutes to one. Where did that go then? That's gone quick today, isn't it? Yep, Daniel is indeed SIM only. That, that is the way to go, SIM only, okay? I'm trying to keep an eye on everything here. This morning, everything's all over the place. Good. So, um, we're doing okay with the weather. It hasn't got too cold yet. But as usual, every single year this happens. Okay, the Daily Express has come out once again with the weather horror story. Here we go. So, Daily Express published yesterday. Winter 2014. Do I, do I even need to carry on? is set to be the coldest for more than a century, with Britain just weeks away from a crippling Arctic freeze, in capital letters, oh yes. Heavy and persistent snow, freezing gales and sub-zero temperatures threaten to grind the country to a standstill for up to five months. Horrified long-range weather forecasters have warned. This is in the Daily Express. Every bloody, every every other week they do this. Every other week. The impending bout of extreme weather will come as a shock and forecasters have warned Britons should not be lulled into a false sense of security by the recent mild conditions. It goes on. January is currently showing signs of temperatures hitting record-breaking lows, meaning parts of the country could show the thermometer plunge to minus 27 degrees. That's centigrade. That's minus 17 Fahrenheit. Oh, please. I don't, I don't even think I'll continue reading that story, actually. No, so, so that's the Daily Express, and we have this every year. Now, cast your mind back, cast your mind back to last winter. Here in the UK, I think it's fair to say we did not have a winter last year. There were the odd, very cold days, but generally, it was very mild. Here is... The story from the Daily Express posted last November, because I kept this. I kept this on my screen because I wanted to read it again for you a year later. And a year later, it's almost past now. So let me read you the weather forecast from the Daily Express for this time last year. Long-range weather forecasters have warned that Britain should prepare for heavy and persistent snow for up to three months, with winter 2013 set to be the worst in more than 60 years. The latest detailed weather forecast for winter 2013, 
which we've had, all point towards months of relentless extreme cold with heavy snows extremely likely across the entire country. Arctic air will roar in from the North Pole later this week, triggering the start of the worst winter in many people's lifetimes. And it went on. Experts, here it is again, that expression again, experts in long-range weather forecasting said the whole of Britain should be prepared for the winter to be the most severe since 1947, which saw the UK hit by relentless slow and some of the lowest temperatures on record. That was the weather forecast from the Daily Express for last year. Now, remember, how was winter last year? Exactly. And they do this every single year. Every single year they come out with this scare story. So I'm not going to take a blind bit of notice of any of it, and I shall carry on. I shall carry on as we are. You see? Load of old baloney, innit? It might be a bit cold, I don't know. Maybe it'll be cold. Maybe it won't be cold. So there we are. While I'm away, I've got um, uh, a decorator coming in. Tom, the handyman. Now, Tom, he's a really nice man. Really, really nice man. I think he's... um. He's very late 20s, but he's a bit of a perfectionist, and I know he's a perfectionist because he did up Ronnie's house, right? And Ronnie is so fussy. Best mate Ronnie is very, very, very fussy with decorating and all that business. I mean, I, I wouldn't do a job for him. He'd just get right on my nerves, he would. Moaning all the time about this, that and the other. He'd be moaning like anything. So Tom is coming to do a little bit of decorating for me. He's doing a downstairs hall. Now... Uh, it doesn't need a complete decorating, but where it was painted before, the paper behind the radiators was all come up. So I thought he was going to have to strip the whole hall. And he said, no, I won't have to do that. He said, he said, it's in quite a good state. All I do is cut that bit of paper off and blend it into the back wall somehow. So I don't know how he's going to do that, but that's what he's going to do. Um, and we're going to paint one of the walls bright pillar box red downstairs, which is the same colour as I've got in my hallway up here. Uh, because at the moment it's all white and it's a bit too white, you know what I mean? So we're going to do one of the colours uh, slightly red. Um, he's doing the toilet downstairs. Now the toilet downstairs, it's only had one coat of paint since I've been here and it's got that awful bubbly paper, you know that bubbly paper, embossed paper? So I said I'd like to just take all that paper off and make it nice and flat. And I've got a little wash basin in there, but it's got a hot and cold tap. And I want um, in there a mixer tap. You know, because you put your own... I don't, I don't know why. In it's, it's only in this country we seem to have hot and cold taps. You go everywhere else and they've all got mixer taps, haven't they? So you've either got to put your hand under boiling hot water or freezing cold water. Although my water here doesn't get that boiling because I don't turn the heating on long enough. Or the hot water on long enough. <laughs> I don't. So it just warms up. So I'm having a little mixer tap. Maybe change the basin, or he said he can take both taps out, put a blanking thing in one of the holes, and put a mixing tap on one of the sides, depending on what we do. So that's going to happen down there. And also, when I first moved in here, I had double glazing put in. One of the things, and I just left it and left it and left it and left it, and I, I've, I've never bothered about it. But what's that thing in front of the window? You know the bit of wood where you put plants and things? What's that called? Window seal. Window seal on the inside, okay? That, you can push it down. You can actually push it down and it comes away from the window. So that's not right. And I should have told them when they put the windows in years ago, but I didn't bother. So he's going to sort that out as well. Apparently he's going to drill some holes um, and try first with, with some sort of filler and pump this filler stuff in to, to push it up like that. If that doesn't work, he said he'll have to actually remove that bit of it and then build it up underneath and then put them back again and then make good. So that's a little bit of work I'm having done while uh, uh, I'm away. I always like to have stuff done while I'm away. Uh, you know, I can't be in the house when all this stuff is going on around me. Oh, it just gets on my nerves, dear. It really does. Um, Matt Martin. Matt, 
I think you sent me an email the other day with suggestions of things to do. Oh, actually, maybe you did it on... Did you do it on Facebook? Because I've, I've been looking for this... Oh, no, you didn't, did you? No, I can't find it anyway. If you did... No, it's not there. I think you sent me an email with suggestions on things to do in Israel. If you did, if you've still got... I'm sorry, I'm so sorry about this. If you've still got that copy, do you think you could send it again? Because I did have it. I'm sure I had it here. And I had a bit of a clearer, as I do now and again, with all my bits of paper. And I think it's gone out the door. So I'd really, really appreciate if you could send that back to me. And uh, I can have perhaps a little read of that. And... Uh, uh, do it like that. I want to say hello to Tom Harris as well this morning. Tom, I don't know if you're still with us or not. Are you still listening? Tom Harris has been with us all, almost since day one. Uh, this show used to be on uh, Live 365. That's how I started doing the show, just as audio only on Live 365. Then I started doing, you know, the, the way it is now. Uh, on audio only and then eventually on to video as well. And we are now, not, is it nine years old? One minute. Hang on, I'll tell you. We are now nine years old, which happened, I think, last week, and I completely forgot about it. Let me see. I know some people like to go back on the video shows. They only go back about six years. Yes, we started the show on October the 1st, 2005. And God, do I look young there. <laughs> if you want to find where that is, okay, now they will be audio-only shows from there. Um, where did the videos start then? 2009? Let's have a try 2009. Oh, yeah, it's 2009. 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, no, I look young, young there as well. I think, oh, let's go to 2008. Oh, hang on, yeah. 2008, yes. Hang on, one minute. 2008, January, maybe? Well, maybe it was 2007 then. Gosh. December 2007? No. Okay. Yes, I remember now. It was. It was January 2008. I started doing the video side of things. Okay. I've got air. I've got air. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right, so if you want to find out where all those are, they're not just on the YouTube channel, OK? The audio shows, now, the short shows are only on the YouTube channel, which you can find by going to my main website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, all the old audio ones, if you want to see if it's... <laughs> If it's got any better, probably the answer to that is no. You can find those, again, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, uh, at the top there, you'll see a big union flag, OK? Go below that, and it says, click here to go to the audio-only versions of my talk shows. If you click on there, it will go there, and on the right-hand side, you'll find... All these dates, all these like like 2014, 13, 12, 11, 10, that's where you'll find those, okay? And you can listen to the audio show only. I think you have to download it first rather than just clicking on it. And to download it first, if, if it doesn't work by just clicking on it, then uh, the instructions are at the top of that page in grey. All right, so that's how that all works. Um, and that's it. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to disappear now. Uh, we should have a little show for you on uh, a short video on Monday. as daily short videos, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, hopefully Tuesday as well. And I do hope to be able to do little shows while I'm in Israel for you as well. Because I like doing them, that's why. Thank you very much. You have a nice Saturday. And uh, I'll see you soon. Have fun. Bye-bye now. <laughs>